In today's adventure, will we survive the crowds in Kamakura and find peace and quiet? <laughs> Hello! <laughs> Our first destination today is Tsurugaoka Hachimangu, which was started over 800 years and it's right in the heart of Kamakura. Upon arriving to Kamakura, our first task is to fill up our bellies with delicious food. The streets are crowded with people. The good news is that everywhere we look, there is food, 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 and more food. We were able to find some delicious traditional Japanese food, some sushi, tempura with rice, delicious. Now we're ready to head to Tsurugaoka. Tsurugaoka Hachimango is the most important Shinto shrine in the city of Kamakura. Especially during the first days of the year, many people come to this shrine to pray for fortune. And today is no exception. As you can see, the crowds at Tsurugaoka are impressive. But the most impressive thing is how orderly everybody is. There is no pushing, there is no rushing. Everybody is moving along very peacefully. It is almost like a dance. Japan is probably one of the few countries where I feel comfortable being in such a huge crowd. Now we're going to get our fortunes for the so-called omikuji. So how do you do the omikuji? You go to the omikuji corners, you draw your omikuji, you pay your fee and after drawing your omikuji and reading it, you proceed to tie the paper that had your fortune to a fence close to a tree and this symbolizes that you are tying your wishes to the life force of the tree, asking for help making your wish come true. Now we're getting out of uh, Tsurugaoka Hachimangu and we're trying to find some peaceful corners where it's not going to be crowded. Our next destination is Kenchoji. Kenchoji is a Buddhist temple that is located only 30 minute walk from Tsurugaoka. Here at Kenchoji we want to visit the temple then climb up to Han Sobo Shrine and then walk five minutes more to the Choyoken Observatory where we expect to get some views of Mount Fuji and also be able to see Oshima Island. Once in Kenchoji, our leader bought our entrance tickets and then we could enter the grounds. Kenchoji is the, the number one Zen temple in, in Kamakura and it's said that it was built in uh, 1253. In Kenchoji you can enjoy five different buildings. Some of the trees that are in this complex are around 730 years old uh, junipers. And they are amazing. The curvature of the temple's roof is supposed to repel demons and spirits, but in fact serves a more practical purpose, which is to repel rain and snow. The layout of this temple follows a Chinese tradition of building the structures on an axis. The garden is found at the end of the temple complex. The garden is a typical Zen garden, which uses very few plants and materials and the pond is shaped in the form of the kanji that represents mind and heart, which is an important element in Zen Buddhism. From Kenchoji now we are heading up to Hansobo Shrine. Hansobo Shrine is a Shinto shrine where the deity that protects the Kenchoji temple is located. So this is quite an interesting fact. So the Hansobo Shrine gets its name from the Hansobo deity that is here. This deity was brought from Chizuoka and the shrine is at the end of the northern part of the grounds. The walkway from Kenchoji to Hansobo is full of beautiful paths, perfect to get away from the crowded areas. If you like to walk in nature, certainly this place is a place to go where you can enjoy walking among the trees. This path to the shrine should take us about 15 minutes and involves about 250 steps going up. Along the way, we will be seeing 12 statues of the so-called Tengu. Tengu is a figure in Japanese thought to be supernatural beings and they take the form of a human being with a 
monkey and also having some bird pictures. Along the path to Hansobu, you can also enjoy nature as there are many trees and depending on the season of the year, you can find and see different colors. The Hansobu Shrine in itself is very simple, but what is beautiful is the views that you can get from Kamakura as well as Mount Fuji and the sea. So it's really uh, rewarding once you get up. Even though the weather was nice, the side looking towards Mount Fuji was clouded, so we couldn't get a side of Mount Fuji. We will have to come back. This path to the Hansobu Shrine is very popular especially among those people that are seeking protection and good luck. Many visitors offer prayers and purchase the amulets that they sell at the shrine. If you like to do active tourism, this hike is a very rewarding experience, offering exercise and a stunning scenery along the way. This is definitely one of my recommended places because the combination of being able to see the, the shrines uh, with the peaceful atmosphere and the panoramic views makes it a really good spot for, for taking pictures and the people that like to be in nature, especially when you live in Tokyo where you only see buildings all the time. Our final destination for the day is the platform called Chojoken, which is only a five minute walk from the Hansobu Shrine and you just have to go up another 180 steps. But once you are there, you can see Oshima and see the entire Kamakura as well as uh, views of Mount Fuji. Another important point is that if you are in Kamakura, Kamakura is always going to be crowded because of the big Buddha and the other tourist attractions. So Hansobu Shrine is relatively less crowded compared to those attractions and of offers a very welcome rest from all these crowded places. It's a very good recommendation to come here. At the end of our walk, we enter an art installation dedicated to the insects. It's called Mushi Suka, and this art installation is dedicated to the countless insects that are lost daily due to human activities. The Mushi Suka is in the middle of a bamboo forest and it showcases the sculpture of insects like beetles and weevils. So if you're visiting Kenchoji and Hansobu Shrine, please take a moment to explore the Mushisuka before and after the ascent to Hansobu Shrine. It's a quick trip, it's free and it really offers something unique that you don't see in everyday life.